Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We ended our discussion on cell wall. Now we will talk about the most important part of the cell that is the control center of the cell. Here we start our discussion on nucleus. So what is nucleus? Now inside this cell, if you look somewhere around the center, if, even if not exactly center, somewhere near the center, you find a prominent spherical or oval rounded structure which is nothing but nucleus and sometimes it is also known as the brain of the cell or the control center of the cell because it controls all the activities which take place inside a cell. It is present in both plant as well as animal cells. It is a spherical or oval structure near the center of a cell. It exists in a variety of shapes and sizes. Now this was one of the important discovery, finding, discovering or describing nucleus for the first time. And it was first described by Robert Brown around 1831. So, uh, as far as the location is concerned, sometimes in some plant cells, due to the presence of a large vacuole, as you can see here, so this is a plant cell, the green one, and here you can see this big blue colored structure that is nothing but a vacuole. So, if you see inside the cell, vacuole is occupying almost more than 50% of the space. So, due to the presence of such a large vacuole, sometimes the nucleus gets pushed towards the periphery. So, here this is the nucleus. This orange structure is the nucleus. This entire structure is nucleus. So you see it is located at the periphery due to the presence of vacuole but otherwise it is mostly located at the center. Now talking about the shapes of nucleus, generally they are rounded but they can also be oval shaped or bean shaped. For example, if you look at paramecium. So in paramecium the shape of nucleus is in the shape of a bean. Again, when you uh, look at the smooth muscle fiber cells, you remember the skeletal muscles, smooth muscles, we spoke about them in our previous lesson. So if you look at an individual cell of the smooth muscle, the nucleus is quite elongated there. Again, if you look at the blood cells, there you can see the nucleus is lobed. That is, they are in two lobes. So the shape of the nucleus, again, varies from one cell to another. Again, talking about the size of nucleus, uh, that also varies. Generally, it is seen that cells which are larger in size have larger nuclei, whereas smaller cells have smaller nuclei. They are present in both plant and animal cells. So let us look at the significance of nuclei. It must be very significant. That is why it is called the control center. So let us look at the significance of nucleus. As I said, it is the control center of the cell because it controls all the metabolic activities which take place inside the cell. It also helps in reproduction. I mean, uh, basically nucleus is the uh, cell, I mean, is that part of the cell which consists of all the genetic material. Therefore, it plays the most crucial, crucial, rule for, uh, crucial role for uh, the process of reproduction. It, it helps a lot in cell division. It also helps in determining cells characteristics that is also again because of the presence of genetic material. So the genes decide the characteristics of the cell. So that way it helps in deciding the characteristics of the cell. So now let us look at the structure of the nucleus. So that small uh, rounded structure at the center when you see it closely it, it looks somewhat like this. So there are many different structures which are present within the nucleus. So the first thing is nuclear membrane. So nuclear membrane again is a covering which covers the entire nucleus. So this basically separates nucleus from the remaining part of the cell. So on the nuclear membrane itself you have small tiny holes called nuclear pores. So here you can see these holes these are nothing but the nuclear pores. And this membrane which you see here is the nuclear membrane. 
Nucleoplasm, the way the fluid-like material present inside a cell is called cytoplasm. Similarly, the fluid-like material present or the matrix which is present inside the nucleus is nothing but nucleoplasm. So this yellow colored fluid is nucleoplasm. Nucleolus, this is again even inside the nucleus you have a rounded region which is very dense and which is seen as a dark spot. So that dark stained region is known as nucleolus. So this portion is nucleolus. Chromatin. Chromatin are nothing but very thin thread like structures present inside the uh, nucleus. So here you can see these are chromatin, the green colored structures which you see here. They are like very thin thread like structures and these chromatin later form chromosomes and chromatin itself gets condensed and they group together to form chromosomes and these chromosomes contain the genetic material that is DNA and protein. So basically the genetic material is contained here with the chromatin. So chromatin play the most crucial role in the process of cell division. So these are the different parts which together constitute the nucleus. So now we will talk about each of these parts, their function in the next slide. So let us start our discussion with nuclear membrane. Now as I said this is a double layered covering of the nucleus. So this membrane itself is of two layers. So you can see here there are two red lines. So they, they are the two membranes. So the space between the two membranes is known as perinuclear space. So where is the perinuclear space? So this space between the two lines, the whatever space is there, that is the perinuclear space. It separates materials inside nucleus from cytoplasm. So that is the purpose of the nuclear membrane. It, it is basically separate. It wants to keep the genetic material organized and intact. That is why it separates it from remaining part of the cell. This nuclear membrane also helps in maintaining the shape of the nucleus because when you have a boundary or when you have a border, the shape is also retained. When you talk about uh, the composition, this perinuclear space is com composed of lipids and proteins. So this has a lipoprotein structure. The next part is nuclear pores, the small holes tiny pores on nuclear membrane which allow transfer of materials to and from inside. So these pores wherever they are present, whether they are nuclear pores or they are plasmodes matter, the purpose of these pores is transfer of materials or exchange of materials. So these pores here are formed by fusion of the two membranes. So these two membranes fuse together to form these small small pores. This nuclear membrane, however, is not continuous. When we talk about the nuclear membrane, that is not continuous. It is interrupted by these pores. Now, when we say, when we talk about this pore, what happens? They are located when the two membranes, suppose if this is outer membrane and this is, this is inner membrane, this is outer membrane. When these two membranes pinch together, that is when they touch each other, that is the area where you actually see nuclear pore. So this is your membrane. So this area is the pore. So we can say that pores are located when the two membranes pinch together. That is they are continuous with each other. Now when I talk about the movement of materials, as I said that this uh, nuclear pores allow transfer of materials. What materials are we talking about? Basically we are talking about proteins and RNA complex. So what happens? Proteins move inside the nucleus. RNA complex which is formed inside the nucleus moves out of the nucleus. So this transfer of materials, materials refer to proteins and RNA complex. Now where proteins are formed, how proteins are formed, we will see that a little later. Next is nucleoplasm. So nucleoplasm is the fluid enclosed by the nuclear membrane. It is also the nuclear matrix, basically the fluid which fills the entire space inside the nucleus. That is the nuclear matrix. It is also known as karyolymph. The term karyo means nucleus and lymph is a fluid. So the nuclear fluid is known as karyolymph. 
it supports chromosomes and nucleolus now this is the fluid in which the nucleoplasm is embedded where the chromatin threads are located which later form chromosomes so uh, this nucleoplasm actually provides a support for existence of chromosomes and nucleolus it is also it also acts as a site for DNA and RNA synthesis now since the chromatin threads are located there so all kind of protein like RNA synthesis or DNA synthesis happens here so it pro acts as a site now talking about the composition of nucleoplasm what is it composed of it is composed of a variety of materials like nucleoproteins nucleic acids proteins enzymes minerals all of these together constitute the nucleoplasm Now the most important part inside the nucleus that is nucleolus. Now many people think that nucleolus is a cell organelle, but actually it is not a cell organelle. It is just a structure which is embedded in the nucleoplasm. It is a it is an area where the density is too high because of which it is seen as a dark or dense area. So that area is known as nucleolus. Now the question is what makes it so dense? So it is this area is composed of protein and RNA. Now as I mentioned before that nucleus contain chromatin threads. So here you can see the chromatin threads. Now these chromatin threads contain the genes which that can make RNA. So in the chromatin thread you have genes and genes are capable of making RNA. So these RNA molecules remain loosely attached to the genes. So when the genes make RNA, those RNA will remain loosely attached to the genes. Now proteins are entered into the nucleus from the endoplasmic reticulum. So proteins are formed somewhere outside the nucleus. Okay, but through the nuclear pores, proteins will enter inside the nucleus. So now these proteins will bind to the RNA molecules to form protein RNA complex. So this area where the protein RNA complex is formed, that is known as nucleolus. So this might be a little confusing. Now suppose proteins are formed somewhere outside. Outside in the sense they are formed in ribosomes. They are the site for protein synthesis. So where, how, we'll talk about that later. Now, for now, you just understand that proteins are formed somewhere outside and these proteins will enter the nucleus through the nuclear pores. Okay. Now, inside the uh, nuclear, I mean, what happens is in this nucleoplasm, the chromatin threads contain gene. This gene will form RNA. So the RNA molecules are loosely attached to the gene. Now when these proteins enter, they bind to the RNA molecule to form protein RNA complex, to form protein RNA complex. Now there is one particular region where all these protein RNA complex are formed. So this area becomes very dense due to high density of protein RNA complex and this area is nothing but the nucleolus. So now you understood nucleolus is not a membrane bound structure. It is just the area where the protein RNA complex density is very very high. So ribosome formation takes place here. So this is the place where ribosomal RNA or ribosomal protein complexes are formed. They may be one or many in number per nucleus. Now, how many nucleolus will be present in a nucleus? That again depends. There can be one nucleolus in a nucleus. There can be more than one as well. Generally, it is seen that larger nucleoli are present in cells carrying out active protein synthesis. Similarly, more nucleoli are present in cells carrying out active protein synthesis. Because if the cells are carrying out active protein synthesis, more and, protein, more, and more proteins will be formed. Those proteins will join with RNA to form protein RNA complex. So ribosomal RNA will be formed. So for that, you need more and more nucleus or you need bigger nucleus, nucleolus. So uh, this was all about nucleolus. So please remember that nucleolus is not a membrane bound organelle. It is just that area inside the nucleoplasm where the density of protein RNA complex is very, very high. 
we will now talk about chromatin so let us see what are chromatin as i said these are thin thin thread like structures which are embedded in the nucleoplasm so here they look as if it is some green colored area but actually these are all small small thread like structures so what is it composed of it is composed of dna rna and histone and non histone proteins dna and rna you know they are the nucleic acids deoxyribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acid and what is histone and histone proteins histones are nothing but they are highly alkaline proteins so basic proteins so what do they do they package dna into structural units in fact uh, like for example if you look at the structure of dna into detail you will see that they have got specific units which get repeated after specific intervals of time now right now you don't know the structure of dna when we talk about um, when we will learn genetics we will talk about the structure of dna so there you will see that histone proteins help the dna to or get organized into structural units now i'll give you one example to make you understand what would happen if there would have been no histone proteins for example you consider a cell in the human body any cell consists of dna and if you do not wind the dna if you keep it like a straight uh, wire so the length will go up to 2 meters so can you imagine how big is 2 meters and just imagine the size of a cell a cell is not even visible by naked eye it is so small inside the cell you have the nucleus inside the nucleus you have the uh, chromatin and there you have the genetic material there you have dna so if dna without winding dna is 2 meters long that is really difficult to accommodate but when this same dna is wound on histones it is around 0.09 mm so just look at the difference in the sizes so when dna is wound on histones then the it gets condensed and this chromatin gets further condensed to form chromosome during later phases of cell division so when the cell is in resting state chromatin will be present but when the cell starts dividing so in the dividing stages these chromatin will group together to form chromosome so each thread will become a chromosome at a later stage of cell division mitosis or meiosis so this is the composition of chromatin now this chromatin exists during resting stage of the cell because later on the cell division stages they will be replaced by chromosomes there are two types of chromatin euchromatin and heterochromatin these are the two types of chromatin so these threads are also of two types euchromatin is the loose form of chromatin that is they contain genes that make rna u means true so true chromatin when you say heterochromatin they here the genes are not active they are condensed form of chromatin so they have extra copies of genes called say junk genes they contribute towards regulation of protein synthesis so u chromatin participate in making rna so they have genes that can directly make rna whereas heteroprotein they cannot make rna but they can just regulate protein synthesis they cannot synthesize proteins on their own but they can regulate the process of photosynthesis so that is why they are heterochromatin because their genes are not active so these are the types of thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again